Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about weddings, specifically what gear I'm using and why you should too. So with it being April now, at least in my part of the world, we are heading into the wedding season. That is if weddings don't get canceled. Fingers crossed that we'll still be shooting weddings this summer. Shooting predominantly in Europe and North America, I'm mostly shooting from the months of April to September with the main months being June, July, and August. Now when it comes to gear, there is really no one right answer for what gear is the best when it comes to shooting weddings. It's really about figuring out what gear works for you and your style of shooting. And that's why I just wanna share what I'm using and why, and maybe that'll help you figure out what gear would work best for you. But for myself, I'm using two camera bodies. I'm using the Canon EOS R and the 1DX Mark II. Now you might be wondering why am I not using, for example, two EOS Rs? And the reason is, is that I just haven't went and bought another one. And I've had this 1DX Mark II as a loaner camera from Canon Finland for almost a year now. So until they ask for it back, I'm gonna keep shooting with this. So I have two camera bodies at all times. And there's a few reasons for this. Uh, first reason, it's really nice to have two camera bodies because that means you can have two lenses on at all the same time. So I can switch from one camera, shoot with this lens, all of a sudden switch to the other camera and shoot with this lens. And I don't have to be fiddling with lenses and switching lenses and potentially missing the moment. So that's why it's really important to have two camera bodies to have the flexibility having two different kinds of lenses and not having to switch in between lenses while shooting. Second reason why I have two camera bodies is well, when you're getting paid thousands of dollars to shoot a wedding, it would be very unfortunate if your main camera body broke and you didn't have a second body to shoot with, forcing you to have to shoot with an iPhone in portrait mode. You probably could do it, but it's pretty risky. So I would definitely suggest if you're getting into the wedding photography world, shooting weddings, you need two camera bodies. For myself, I remember at one point I was only shooting with one camera body and I was actually getting nightmares. Uh, these nightmares where I would be shooting a wedding and the camera would break and all of a sudden I would have to be asking someone from the, from the audience, like one of the guests saying, hey, can I borrow your DSLR and shooting the wedding? And you really don't want that to happen if you're a professional wedding photographer. So shoot with two camera bodies. Now, when it comes to these two camera bodies, um, I really love Canon cameras for their fast autofocus, very reliable. I love the color science of Canon cameras. And really, it's just what I've been shooting with from the start pretty much. So they're really um, comfortable and easy to use for me. So that's why I'm shooting with Canon cameras. Now, when it comes down to lenses, I think there's gonna be a never ending argument whether you should shoot with zoom lenses or prime lenses. And I personally shoot mostly only with prime lenses. I'm using the Sigma Art 35mm 1.4 lens, and then I've got the 85 RF 1.2 lens. Now let me explain to you why I believe and why I think prime lenses work better for me than zoom lenses. I think with zoom lenses, it's really easy to get lazy and you just stand in one position and just shoot a wide shot, zoom in, punch in, and shoot a tighter shot, but you're not changing the perspective on those photos, you're just zooming in closer. As well with zoom lenses, most of the time you're having apertures much higher, like 2.8, which means that you're not getting enough light when you're shooting dark situations, and you're not getting that really nice creamy bokeh. Now when shooting with prime lenses, yes, you don't have the flexibility of being able to zoom in, but you, get a really nice high aperture. So I've got 1.4 on the 35 millimeter and the 1.2 on the 85 millimeter, meaning I get really nice shallow depth of field, like that nice creamy bokeh. And I really like that magical look when it comes to wedding photography. So I like to shoot prime lenses to get that nice shallow depth of field and as well to get that nice bokeh. Secondly, like I said earlier with zoom lenses, with prime lenses, you can shoot in dark situations. And I don't know about you guys, but most time when I'm shooting in a church or reception, there's not a lot of light. And when you're shooting a prime lens and you shoot it at 1.4 wide open, you're getting enough light in and you're still able to shoot in those conditions. Of course then, at some point, if it just gets way too dark, don't try to just struggle, just put a flash on the camera and bounce to the roof. But most of the time, I'm not using flashes and I'm able to just shoot with prime lenses alone. And lastly, like I mentioned with the zoom lens, when you're shooting with prime lenses, you don't have the luxury of just zooming in, which actually forces you to get creative. You gotta move around and shoot from different angles, 
getting a different perspective on the shots and I really like that. I, I remember my first mentor who took me on a wedding gig, he told me about prime lenses and he told me that this is why I use it, is that it forces him to really go around and shoot from different angles and to get a different perspective on your shots. Now I pretty much shoot 95% of the day with the Sigma 35 and the 85 millimeter lens, only in extreme conditions when I need a really wide shot, whether that be a big group shot or maybe on the dance floor, I would use the Canon 15 and 35 RF lens to get really wide shots. And then sometimes in the rare occasion that for example at a church, you're just not allowed to get close enough to the couple, I do use the Canon 7200 lens. But really, I'm only taking those lenses for a handful of times in the whole wedding season. And most of the time, 95% of the time, I'm shooting either with a Sigma 35 or the 85 millimeter lens. And the reason why I'm using these two prime lenses is that I think they're the happy medium between the two. 35 millimeter lens, you're not getting that weird distortion, but it is wide enough to get a nice wide shot or get group shots, or even just to shoot portraits of the couple, a nice wider shot. And then with the 85, it's a nice tight shot, a really high aperture so I can really get a shallow depth of field. So sometimes when you're shooting in a venue, for example, the church or where you're getting ready or at the reception, if the background isn't so glamorous, if it's not so beautiful, you can just blur it all out and just put the focus on the couple. So that's why I'm using the combo of the 35 and the 85. I think it's wide enough and then tight enough but you don't need those two extremes usually. So that's why I'm shooting with the Sigma 35 art lens and the 85 millimeter lens. Now at the end of the day, it's really deciding what gear works best for you. For some people, they might wanna have a zoom lens. They wanna have that flexibility to shoot with, for example, a 24 to 70, get those wide shots and then zoom in tight and get the 70 millimeter shot. And for them, not having that really high aperture is not a big deal. And maybe then zoom lenses are great for you. But for myself, I really want to have that nice shallow depth of field. I want to challenge myself to be able to move around and get these different perspectives. And that's why I'm shooting with prime lenses. So guys, really simple setup, two camera bodies, two lenses. That's really all you need to shoot weddings. Hopefully this will help you going into the wedding season. And I hope that you guys get some fantastic photos. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and that'll prepare you for the wedding season. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe if you're not yet part of this channel, and we'll see you on next week's video.